Hello, this tutorial is going to help you with this week's assignment to work on uh, machines and renewable energy generation. And um, it's actually uh, quite a concise set of things to do. Um, you, you'll find that the simulation is going to take very little time, but there's a lot of thinking and um, other work that needs to go into it. So start early and um, ask me lots of questions on Thursday. You'll find the um, materials that you need in this Machines and Renewables folder, and this is the assignment. I'd suggest that you uh, download it and print it out. There's also two references here. There's from the textbook, Hutman Renewables, and then a reference on different metrics that are commonly used for heating and cooling systems. If you open the assignment, you can see here... Um, actually I'll do this in double page view, that um, it's it's just four pages, so there's not uh, a huge amount. There's um, one page that goes through uh, kind of how to um, model the HVAC systems and uh, renewable energy systems, and that's what we'll be going over in this tutorial. I also want to draw your attention to some other resources here. There's this world energy use um, Sankey diagram, which is a really useful um, tool and quite insightful um, as it looks at the mix of energy that different countries use. Now this is on a countrywide basis, so I really encourage you to uh, look at even more local information if you have it. So for instance, in the Bay Area, I wouldn't look at the United States, I'd look at California, and even more specifically at Pacific Gas and Electric, PG&E, where I get my utility bill. And PG&E publishes the mix of um, fuels or uh, feedstocks that goes into the electricity I have here. However, if you can't find that local information, or even in addition to that local information, the countrywide information is pretty interesting to look at. Uh, for instance, if we look at China here, you can see uh, immediately that most of the production of energy is coming from coal. And um, that if you look at um, where that's going into industry, transport, other and non-energy uses, um, much of the electricity is going into industry and other. Included in other, by the way, is... Um, Re is uh, residential and commercial buildings. If you go to final consumption here, you can see that a little better. On the right-hand side, you can see residential. And if I click on that, it gives me the um, mix of feedstocks that go into uh, residential. You can see 49% of this is uh, appears to be biofuels and waste, um, and uh, which is which is very interesting to see here. Um, that's kind of a surprise. The 13% um, um, is coal and 15% um, is electricity. The um, commerce and public services, if you've got, if you're looking at a commercial building, this is where you're probably going to look first. And you can see in this case, 43% um, is oil and 33% is coal. Uh, and that's generally for heating and cooling. Now this says agriculture or forestry. Oh, I clicked on the wrong one, sorry. This should be commerce, there you go, commerce and public. Um, so 21% is oil and 28% is coal. 34% is electricity and that electricity is also made out of, made up of coal, uh, which you could see from this diagram over here. Interestingly enough, this also will give you a snapshot over time, uh, dating back to 1973, and you can see um, demand increasing, um, especially using this time graph to select full to view. So I'm going to select the coal flow, and you can see it steadily increasing over time. Um, similarly, if you look at geothermal, there's basically none reported until about 1994, and then it's been increasing ever since. So interesting to look at your country and compare different countries, um, but I'd, if possible, look at something even more local uh, if you can find that resource. 
The purpose of looking at the Sankey diagram or at any uh, distribution of um, energy is to see whether it really makes sense to um, worry about renewable energy on site because if your power grid is supplying renewable energy then perhaps in terms of ecology and building performance it uh, is less of a critical issue. On the other hand if your um, electricity is coming from uh, uh, fossil fuels, then there's uh, potentially a, a choice, an ethical choice, about whether you prefer to, to uh, how you supply it, and ultimately whether it's uh, your building becomes a, a net zero energy building. Um, so, I would like you to trace where the power is coming from, um, not only uh, in terms of the grid, but also locally um, in terms of your machines. And we'll get into that a little bit further, but I just want to show you an example here. So this is past student work. They looked at all the different sources uh, that the grid was producing, um, both uh, natural gas, nuclear, hydroelectric, and renewable energy, in some respects hydroelectric can be considered renewable, uh, wind, solar, geothermal, and biomass, and its contribution to the, the grid, what losses you get, and uh, how it's used on site. Here you can see this person had primarily a wood-burning stove for heating, and so um, they traced their, um, that energy from the forest um, through transportation means and distribution to conversion on site into heat and um, accounted for all the losses along the way. And I'd like you to do this through your own systems, whether it's a heating system or a cooling system or a hot water system, um, and to diagram those uh, losses both from the feedstock all the way through transmission and conversion to um, the, the building and inside the building. We're going to talk more about this during lecture, so uh, hopefully you'll get a better sense of it then as well. Okay, the next part of the assignment is to uh, compare the energy use of the base case, um, that is how your building is actually uh, designed, to an improved suite with um, different heating and cooling systems. And you can see here I've labeled a bunch of different systems I'd like you to try out. Um, the existing heating and cooling systems, hypothetical one that's 100% efficient both for heating and cooling, a heat pump that has a COP of 2 for heating and a COP of 3 for cooling, a heat pump with heat recovery that has a COP of 5 and 6, and then radiant heating and cooling with a whole house fan with um, a even higher COP but um, you should make sure that you're actually scheduling the exhaust fan and seeing that uh, ventilation energy use. So I'm going to walk you through those. They're quite um, quick and easy to do. The way to start is with your um, baseline model. So in Energy Plus, uh, the IDF editor or the, uh, the um, EP launch you want to start with your, your new and improved baseline, wherever that baseline is, the, the best baseline that you have so far. And then I've uh, renamed this 40 uh, and baseline 3. And I'm going to want to uh, run that. Actually, I already have, so I'm going to just open it here and then uh, simulate it again uh, so you have that file. And then paste the variables into your dashboard um, Actually, I'm sorry, not the variables. Paste the tables into your dashboard as you have before and paste them into the table column here. And under end use, uh, copy those end uses to the input output summary just as you have in uh, previous work. So I copied it there just, just like always. Uh, and so now you've got your baseline back and I'm going to actually change this to 40 baseline 3 and and then I want to do um, a few other um, iterations 
of uh, COP, or coefficient of performance, sort of the system efficiency. And if you go to the model inputs calculator that um, I, I distributed a couple weeks ago, um, I, I uh, outlined here the system efficiency of all of your um, different uh, buildings, and sort of my assumed system efficiency. And you'll see down below here that there are a bunch of other resources for uh, kind of cooling systems, heating systems, uh, furnaces, etc., uh, both a low and a high. And then distribution systems. So, for instance, if you're looking at a furnace, the furnace is going to be distributed by um, the, the hot air from a furnace is going to uh, be distributed through ducts and be propelled by fans. If you're looking at a radiant system, then you've, the distribution is by pipes and it's distributed by um, pumps. Uh, and so there's a, a difference in efficiency between a duct and a pipe and a fan and a pump. And um, it's reflected to uh, some extent by the ener energy efficiency ratio that I've got here. So if you take these ratios and you add them up, you can have uh, the system coefficient of performance, the distribution coefficient of performance, and a total coefficient of performance. So for these different um, for these different cases, I'd like you to try them. So we've already got our existing heat and cooling systems. Then I want to try a hypothetical 100% efficient one. So for 100% efficiency, I would go back to my dashboard. I go into space heating and change that to one and cooling to one and hot water to one. Now the hot water is not currently linked to anything so I'm not going to, let's, let's concentrate mainly on heating and cooling for this assignment. And then I'm going to go back to end use and you'll see that the system efficiency is changing and so too do your heating and cooling numbers. So I'm going to copy these to my input output summary and down here I'm going to paste them and I'm, I should have labeled this um, let's see 41 100% efficient and you can see the the difference um, as I've increased my cooling and decreased my heating and in some respects this probably makes sense to maybe just show the heating and cooling uh, so I'm deleting these other these other end uses so that we have a better sense. So I'm going to keep the heating, cooling, and ventilation. Um, so that's the 100% efficient version. That's done. Good. The next one is the heat pump. So COP of two and three. So I'm going to go to end. You, or sorry, I'm going to go up to my um, system efficiency. The space heating um, heat pump would be two, and the space cooling would be three. Um, if you're confused about why that is or how that's possible, do the reading for next time because that um, explains a lot about system efficiency. And um, so now I go back to my end use and you'll see that these numbers have been further reduced. So I'm going to copy that over to my next column and I should probably uh, name this COP2 COP3 for heating and cooling. And you can see we've drastically reduced our heating and cooling. Now I should sh I should uh, point out or, or remind you I went over this earlier in, in an earlier tutorial on Energy Plus and HVAC systems. The one that we've modeled in Energy Plus is a ideal loads air system. So that means that it is going to supply as much heating or cooling energy as is needed in the zone in order to maintain the thermostat set points and it's going to do so at 100% efficiency. So what we're doing here in 
the dashboard is accounting for different systems by using an effective coefficient of performance. Now this is a shorthand, a very quick way of estimating system performance, and in fact, Energy Plus can do quite detailed calculations for different systems. However, um, getting to learning those takes some time, and uh, we don't have that much time left in the semester. So this is something that you can investigate on your own time when the semester ends uh, to look at modeling specific systems. And a good resource for that, if you're interested, is to go to the input-output reference and the example files that come with Energy Plus. When you install Energy Plus, it automatically uh, makes this folder on your, your hard drive called Energy Plus version 8.5, and you'll see that there's um, example files in here. These example files are, there's actually tons of these. Most of these demonstrate the use of different types of systems. Um, so you see like there's a, a heat pump system here, uh, air to air with uh, relative humidity control. There's um, different types of heat pumps. There's water to air, there's chillers, there's um, huge amounts of, of different types of, um, of heating and cooling systems. So if you want to dive into this further, these are really good um, uh, resources, the example files, and also that input-output reference that uh, you can find online. So getting back to our exercise here, the next um, is a heat pump with um, a heat recovery, and we've got a COP of 5 and 6. So I'm going to go back to my... Um, my my uh, efficiency here and input five and six and I I guess I'll well I'm up here I'll do this C O C O P five and C O P six and I'm going to copy these numbers now down to here so you see a trend here obviously as the COP increases my um, heating cooling decreases of course um, and it kind of gives you the relative amount now what's going to be interesting is to compare these numbers of your baseline building to the numbers of your um, improved suite I guess I'm getting a little ahead of myself here. We should do the, the one last one first, which is radiant heating and cooling with a whole house fan. That's a COP of five and a half and six and a half. But we need to schedule that whole house fan. And so just like you started to do in the last assignment, um, when you looked at ventilation, you can go back to Energy Plus and, sorry, what number are we on? 43. So I'm going to um, save this file as 44 and I'm going to call it whole house fan and you actually already kind of modeled this in ventilation I'm going to go to my exhaust fan object and turn this on and I'm going to input the appropriate fan pressure rise. So if I'm in a house and it's a direct exhaust to the outdoors and there's no ducts, I might call this uh, 300 pascals. If I'm in a large office building and it has a, a long pathway and a lot of resistance, I'm going to call that 1200. And you remember from that last exercise that there's um, a few in between to consider. Uh, and this is going to be on for five air changes per hour. You, I would recommend that you um, schedule this so that you're not competing with your cooling and heating system. Um, but what this is going to do, this whole house fan, is going to um, further improve, theoretically, it will improve your heating and cooling. Um, and as you do this, you're going to want to also uh, sort of coordinate it with your uh, ventilation. So you may have already um, kind of optimized your building for ventilation 
but it's uh, this is this is we're talking about the baseline building now. So um, I guess I'm just going to go ahead and run this as is. I'm not really sure what it's going to do because I'm not going to spend the time um, reconfiguring the schedule right now. You all know how to do that by now. But I'm going to save this with that on. Um, and I'm going to run that. I hope this is, I hope I haven't forgotten something. I think that's right. And I'll come back when this is done. All right, so it's done running now. I'm going to take the tables file and paste it into my dashboard and see what we get with the ventilation. I'm going to, um, for the system efficiency now, I think that I said this is radiant, radiant heating and cooling. So I'm going to have a COP of 5.5 and 6.5. And I'm going to go to my input output summary and change that, 5.5 and 6.5. And, and, and I'm going to call this 44. You know what? Well, okay. I'm just going to call it COP. Five and a half, six and a half, and fan. And let's see what numbers we got here. I'm going to copy this over to my input output summary. And there we go. So the fan energy went up a little bit based on that extra um, whole house fan that I that I input. That makes sense. Okay. So this is now all you've got to do for your baseline. I'd like you to repeat this process for your improved suite. So um, I, I imagine that a lot of your, um, you, compared to your baseline, your improved suite will uh, bring down these numbers quite a bit. Now, if you have included in your improved suite um, improved machines, um, you know, heating and cooling systems, I'd like you to, to uh, sort of swing those back to be the baseline machines and uh, um, heating and cooling system so that you can get a sense of the impact of these different strategies. Um, and the reason that I want you to do this, this might sound like kind of an academic exercise, but I want you to look and see if once you've reduced the need for heating and cooling uh, through uh, sort of optimizing the filters, the building envelope, if there's really a need to invest in a much better heating and cooling system. In other words, if you don't have a demand for a heating and cooling system, then how efficient that heating and cooling system is doesn't really matter that much. On the other hand, if you've got, if you're not able to, um, to, to optimize those, that envelope, then that heating and cooling system could make a dramatic difference. So once you finish um, those comparisons, you should end up with one, two, three, four, five, ten graphs, five times two, and uh, that would be most of what you've got to do for this uh, comparison. Then output the graphs and annotate them in InDesign. The next step is to look at renewable energy systems, and I'll cover that in the next tutorial.